guys, what's going on? Dream Reaver 23 here, and today we're going to be starting a new series. Uh, the game Towns is out. It's out on uh, Steam. You can get it. It's right now on sale for $11.99. Regular price, I want to say, is like $15. It is not a, com a complete game, and it's it's not finished. It's kind of like pulling like Minecraft did. They're working on it as it's released out. Purchase it now. You can get it for a lower price than you can whenever it will be out later on. Um, but I, I want to do a tutorial series for it. The game is somewhat difficult. Right now I have 37 hours in the game, <clears throat> and I absolutely adore this game. I enjoy it. It's really fun. Um, it is time consuming. It's one thing that, I mean, doing all this stuff takes time. But I was reading through the forums the other day, and a lot of people are having a lot of problems with it, trying to get past it. I just died for the first, like, six hours that I was playing this game. And so I wanted to do a tutorial series on it. I'm starting to get a bit more of an understanding on how to do certain things in the game, some good strategies to use and everything like that, and I wanted to get that set out. Um, now this will be broken up into a few different parts, and so once we kind of get everybody up on you know the same page, we'll uh, start doing more of the Let's Plays with them. I have been, I've been kind of putting in a lot of research just to figure out, okay, how do I do this, and what do I need to do to do this, and I want to share that with you. And also, if you guys have some information that uh, you want to share, sorry about that, <clears throat> some information that you want to share, just uh, post it down in the comments below, um, let me know what you guys think about the game and everything like that, but I, I'm absolutely adored, I, I'm in love with this game, there's uh, I guess four or five people now on the server that are playing it too, uh, I do play this game a lot on uh, live stream on Twitch, and so anytime you pop in there, yesterday I think I was playing on there for like seven hours, it's crazy. Uh, but I want to kind of go and give you guys a setup of what we're going to be doing, <clears throat> and we're still going to be doing the Minecraft series. We're actually just switching over server hosts today. Um, I'm going to Fluctus, a server hosting company that's got good pricing, and um, I'm, I'm pretty excited to see everything that's going on on there. So let's go ahead and get started jumping in. Now, once you get Towns, you're going to go to this screen right here. You do have your options to where you can change graphics, uh, just going into a full screen mode or not, audio, turning the, the sound effects or the music on or off. <laughs> now, I do think for this, we actually will keep the music on just because it'll have something in the background. Game, so you can do mouse scroll on. You have your options that you can do through in there, and you can check that out on your own. And then language, you can change it from English to Spanish. All right, back. <clears throat> now, you do have tutorials that you can do in there. These honestly didn't help me at all. Uh, the two things that I want, if, if anybody from you know the development team, team at Towns does uh, you know watch this video, which would be great, um, the only things that I would like to see done in here is obviously you know, continue doing moving forward with the stuff that you're adding to the game itself. Options-wise, I would like to see something done so that you can change the audio levels not just turn them on and off for the music but turn the music down because the music is kind of loud and that's about the only thing that i'm looking at on there now whenever you're in your um screen to where you can choose your maps you'll notice that there's yellow and white white means there's no saved map on there uh, yellow means that you have a saved map so with this one right here we're actually going to go to a normal map and i'm going to actually just start a new game <clears throat> and i know that's going to erase my stuff i know but I, I've been kind of trying to figure out this information, and um, one thing that does really help, I do have set up in the options to where when the game starts, it starts paused. And so if you hover over here, you can see that the game is paused. <clears throat> uh, you can also have it paused whenever it starts a siege. Now, looking out, a normal map is going to have, the only two things it's going to have in here is jungle biomes, and, um, and there's the normal plains biomes. And the jungle biomes typically... Those occur whenever the uh, a lot of the frogs like to be around there. Which right now I'm not even seeing any jungle biomes on here, so I might have that mistaken. I could have swore I always saw a jungle biome though around here somewhere. Uh, now you can move with edge scroll or WASD to move your mouse around. You don't actually control anybody. If you if you're new to this game altogether, <clears throat> um, then you'll then let me explain it from that level as well. <clears throat> WASD moves your map around. You don't actually control the characters in the game. Uh, it's much like, you know, Age of Empires or, or things along those lines. You direct them to what they, you want done, and then they do it. Give me one second, guys. I do apologize about that. 
Uh, it was instantaneous for you, but me, I've been trying to fight off getting sick for a few days now. And it's... It's, it's fun. So, right now we are just kind of looking around, seeing what we have available out here. In terms of resources. Now there's things like, this right here is gravel. From gravel you can get flint, which you need to make uh, like fires and stuff like that, little cooking fires. Um, you have regular grass, which you get mud from. Uh, stone, obviously makes stone. There's coal, there's iron, there's gold, there's enemies, there's everything in here. There's some fruit trees over here, which is good. You got apple and pear trees. And honestly, this over here in this area looks like a much better outlook than the one we have right over here. <clears throat> this one's not terrible. I mean, you do have some fruit trees. I want you also have the stone right over here. All right, we're gonna we'll, we'll stick in this area. <clears throat> and so you start off with 11 citizens, and you can actually check out your citizens if you click here. Get some orientation to your layout on the screen. This is your citizens panel. If you click on it, you can actually see the citizens, see their happiness level. Uh, they all start off pretty happy. Uh, they're just coming into the new town, but that drops quickly. Uh, you can also see their hit points, their attack power. I think I, I'm not sure that's power because the damage is the you know the damage done, but the attack ratio. Not sure. You also have their their equipment. You can equip them with armor and with weaponry. Um, if you hit, if you go over to these little arrows, you, that's E is the next citizen and R is the previous citizen. You have soldiers. You can convert citizens into soldiers just by clicking this convert to soldier button. This is your day, month, year. You have your heroes, which right now we have no heroes. And there's a caravan. Whenever you get a uh, market set up, you can actually, the caravan will come and visit you and you can buy and sell from them. If you hit F2 or you click this button right here, you have your stock panel. Now with your stock panel, it's a really good resource to seeing if you have any human corpses that are just laying around or seeing how much uh, materials, raw materials you have, raw food, <clears throat> raw fish. I haven't fished yet. I, I should really check that out. Uh, weapons, showing what weapons you have. Flaming death, that's cool. Uh, armor, same thing. And so you can get a good inventory, an idea of what inventory you have for your uh, available resources. And then vanity. Vanity is things that increase the happiness of your citizens. Uh, over here on the right, you have your map, which gives you the overhead view. You can click on here to get different spots. If you ever do get lost and you don't know where the hell you're at, because that's happened to me a few times, if you just hit E, it brings you right back to your citizen, you know, the next citizen in line. Now you do have a couple things, you'll notice that whenever I'm putting my mouse around this area on this specific level, on level 1, which is just your regular top of your ground, is level, level 0 is the ground level, um, you can see that whenever I put my mouse by these trees they disappear. To me that's annoying and also it kind of affects whenever you put down a mill or any of the buildings. By turning it off, it doesn't do it. Uh, and you can also click that right here, flatten blocks near the cursor by hitting T. Brings that back up. Uh, you can turn on a grid if you need a grid layout, which can be helpful for just planning out some structures. Uh, and then flatten blocks is Z, or you can click it right here. And I use this often to see what row I'm on. It's the easiest way to see which row that I'm on, or what level, I guess I should say. So, and it just kind of changes the layout. You can see the rocks right here, the stone, and the trees disappear. So it does help. Now, the reason why it does help is because I don't know what level I'm on right here, but I can see that I'm on this level. So if I was building on here, it would build out this way. Uh, you can also go level up with Q and X. I just use a scroll wheel. Uh, you can lower your speed. Right now the game is paused, but you have game speed 1, 2, and 3. 3 being the fastest, 1 being the slowest. And then you have your options in here. Uh, your settings will just go through save, save and quit, just quit, and go to options so you can turn the music off and on and whatnot. Over here on the left side, you have a few different menus. Announcements, which clicking on any of these will open these up in here. But you have uh, your <clears throat> system messages, which tells you if the game's paused or the game speed. Uh, also, if a caravan is coming, things along those lines. Hero messages just deals with damage that's done from your heroes, or if your heroes get attacked, or if heroes die or leave. And the reason 
A lot of times your heroes will leave if there's not enough food or if you don't have enough citizens. Combat messages, this goes for anything. And that's one thing that kind of threw me off for a while. I kept hearing people die or I'd hear <clears throat> like a choking sound. And it was animals dying that just anybody. And anytime this blinks, it can be because there's a froggy in somewhere on the map that got sick or something. The rooster died. Uh, and then announcements, this just announces different things as well. If you get new immigrants that come to town or death from spiders or anything like that. So we're going to go ahead and get started off. And this that's just kind of a general layout of the top part of the map. On your left hand side right here, you have um, you have these three areas. Let's we'll start off with that way. <clears throat> the left hand side is kind of your automation system. Okay, So you can tell people to gather wheat to gather bananas. If you're in a, a jungle biome, then you have bananas. Um, a blue radish plant. I mean, diff these different things right here, you can tell them to gather that. You can have them uh, milk cows, milk uh, a doe, a unifalo chicken, or a scootin' beaten. What the hell that is. Uh, you can also make it to where, okay, this is to for them to make bread. Now, you have two sides of these buttons right here. The one on the left is to immediately make, I want two cherry pies made, and that's all. The one on the right here is always maintain an inventory of two cherry pies, or apple pies, I'm sorry. So that says anytime anybody comes and eats one, they're going to make one more apple pie. It's a good way of making sure you always have food in stock. Um, baking, cooking, same way. Butchering is the same way. Always make sure you have two raw badger meat if I click on this side. So you kind of get the idea with that. Uh, pretty simple to follow. The one thing that does bother me, and this is one other thing that I would like uh, for SMP to fix, <clears throat> is this shouldn't be harvest wheat. I understand you need to harvest wheat, but it should also can include that into, I would say instead of harvest wheat, make flour having that as a separate one because basically what happens if I turn this on to two always ha have you know at least two wheat as soon as they make it as soon as they harvest it they bring it over to the mill which we'll get into that in a little bit and it it um, says okay well I need another wheat and so you get this huge pile up of flour over there by the mill just because the cows just keep going you know they do their thing uh, materials, same way. You can go through and have always harvest, you know, planted trees or always make sure you have glass. Different things like that. Burning, you can actually burn your excess. So if you have tons of, of, of uh, mud, you can always have them burn mud to get rid of it. <clears throat> and then vanity, always, you know, stock this stuff or always make these. Always make sure you have at least two blue hats. So that's what's the, on the left side. We're going to go ahead and close that one down. <clears throat> On the right side, which by, you can keep these open by clicking on this little tab right here. If it's green, it says it's staying open. On your right side is your building stuff. Uh, since it's not just, you know, materials or anything like that, it's kind of just stuff. So you can go in here and you can make walls and you can lay walls out. Uh, the top on everything is scaffolding, which is a beautiful thing and I'll explain more to you on that in a little bit. But you can go in here to each of these sections and if you have an excess of wood, you can make wooden walls. If you have stone, you can make stone walls. You need to make, a, you need to have a mason's bench to make these. Um, decorative. So I mean, you you have the idea right here. You can do different things. You can also do pillars. You can do some pretty nice stuff in there. Uh, you also have your utilities area, which this right here just makes all your different utilities, which you will need to place on your zones. It is convenient in the fact that it tells you uh, what it is: a carpenter's bench, a rusted wooden bench carpenter's bench used to make wooden objects it says it needs two wood and it goes on the zone right there in the yellow carpentry zone this one also goes in the carpentry zone the wood detailer the bone carving bench carpentry zone the mason's bench goes in the masonry zone bakery zone bakery zone and so on and so forth forge 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 kitchen kitchen anywhere kitchen the altier uh, atelier it's an altier an altar shop and the hospital. <clears throat> uh, planting, this is how you plant stuff, which we're going to get to that very shortly. You can make roads. The beautiful thing about roads is they travel faster on roads. Your citizens travel faster on roads. Uh, your doors, your furniture, 
And decorative, this is how you increase the happiness of your people. Containers is extra storage, it's a beautiful thing. And buildings, this is where you get your mill, your pig farms, your cow farms, your mine shaft, which is beautiful. Uh, go ahead and keep that closed down. <clears throat> your bottom row down here is your buttons to your immediate actions. You can tell people to harvest, to chop, to cut, to dig, to mine, to till, and then you can also place down your stockpiles and zones. These right here is to delete items. If you use the delete, so if I wanted to go over here and delete this mushroom bush. Nah, it's not gonna delete it, I have to destroy it. <clears throat> uh, your cancel order, if you did say, I went to go through and said till this land, right here. Well, crap, I don't want you to till that right there. I know it's going to plant something. If you hit cancel order, it goes on there. Now, one thing that to be said is if you use the, um, the dig, <clears throat> mine operates on the level that you're on, okay? Dig, or no, dig right here operates on the level below what you're on. So these are fine. It operates on the level below it. So... That's something to keep in mind. I can't cancel the order on this row. I have to drop down to the lower row the, in the ground to cancel it. Took me a while to figure that out and I had to, I lost a lot of people because they just dug into uh, a pond underwater. Citizens can't swim is also a good information to, to have right there. They can't swim for anything. They suck at swimming. So keep that in mind. Uh, so that's going to be a base uh, analysis of, of just the overall usage of the layout of your screen. <clears throat> Get you kind of familiarized with everything. Now we will go through more in depth whenever we're using it because you do use really every, every bit of information that's up there. Uh, so we will go ahead and choose this spot right here just to go through for the different tutorials. We'll get stuff set up. Uh, first thing we want to do is... I want to show you how to set and place stockpiles and what they do. All right, so you have different stockpiles. Whenever you click on your stockpiles menu, you have raw materials, raw food, prepared food, utilities, furniture, ITEs, etc., etc., etc. Raw materials is your one you're going to set up most often right off the bat, just because you can keep a convenience factor to it. You can say, "All right, you guys are going to do this work, and you're going to place it right here. We're going to place this stockpile." Three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, five, six, seven. I like quantities of seven. One, it's a prime number. Two, <clears throat> you'll see. So I placed down by clicking on stockpiles and going to raw materials. It gave me my option. You can see the the tool you have selected right up here in the, in the top left. <clears throat> uh, by right clicking, you can get rid of it, or just clicking escape. I want to say. Yeah, escape will get rid of it as well. So we have this stockpile right here. Now, if we're out of that zone, that layer, I can't click on it. I can't do anything with it. But if we're in the layer for it, which we can tell by hitting Z, you can, if you right click on it, you have manage stockpile and destroy stockpile. Stockpiles and zones don't cost anything to place down. So, I mean, you can sit here and mess with them as much as you want to. Seven and seven. Uh, by right clicking and going to manage stockpile you can actually say ex exclusively what you want to go in the stockpile so uh, right off the bat everything is enabled I want to disable all I do this for damn it <laughs> for a specific reason and that's because I like to have control don't we all seven and seven Right click manage stockpile, disable all, right click manage stockpile. Now you can go in here and say materials. You are only going to enable wood on this one. And so that way only wood is what will be stacked on the stockpile. We're going to hit space bar and go ahead and continue in, show them what's going on. I'm going to slow this down too so we can kind of get, see so you see I'm on game speed one. If I go through and have them harvest, uh, mine this stone. We'll let them do that and speed it up. Now you can see right there that they're not moving the stone over to the stockpile because I told them no, only wood. But if I go through and have them chop down these trees, which we will do. Mm 
they're going to go and they'll chop down the trees and move that over to the stockpiles. Oh, that is a tree keeper. And my guys have no stuff. Tree keepers are enemies that will kill you, and they look like just regular trees. Except for the fact that he will attack your people. See, my guy's severely wounded, and he just died. Awesome! Right off the bat in this tutorial, I get killed. Uh, now, we can go through right here, because you don't want to leave corpses out by any means. Um, and we can say, all right, a grave. We're going to put the grave right here. Ah, damn it, I don't have a mason's bench. You know what? We'll, we'll have just delete him right now. If you go through and destroy human corpse, it makes it to where a ghost cannot come up from there. You do not want a ghost to come up because they will rape your villagers, pretty much. Um, so, continuing on with the, with the tutorial, not getting distracted by wanting to do other stuff. Uh, so that's, that's how the stockpiles work. And you can manage these stockpiles, you know, however you want to. I recommend pausing your game while you're trying to do this because, uh, yeah, you'll want to. Now you just saw right there, I uh, enabled raw materials barrels. Or almost, a raw materials barrel is takes up a single grid point on your stockpile. Actually, you can put them anywhere, but I typically try to keep them near the stockpile or on the stockpile, <clears throat> uh, just to keep everything kind of you know in order. A raw materials barrel is made over here on your right side. And if you go down here to containers, you have raw materials barrel, raw food barrel, raw or prepared food barrel, and then you have tool chest and different chests and everything down here. A raw materials barrel is you put that in that one grid spot, so instead of that one log being able to occupy that grid spot, you'll be able to put in 10 items. So you could put in 10 logs in that grid spot. So it multiplies your um, stockpile by 10. Which is really helpful. Uh, and you can also, by using a raw materials barrel, you can control what goes into the, each raw materials barrel as well. You can make it to where it's only wood or only stone. So it does really help out. Uh, so that's, that's the overview for just basic stockpile usage. Raw food works the same way. That carries, that's where you can carry um, meats, uh, poultry, um, wheat, flour, but things like fruits apples, pears, and stuff like that, that's considered a prepared food because people can eat it right off the bat. You don't have to worry about anything. Uh, so it's good information to have on there. Prepared foods, obviously that goes, that prepared food, uh, prepared food stockpile works the same way. Utilities, so anything that you make for um, your zones, you can store them there if you want to. Uh, and it actually does have good purpose. You can get those things made and there's different caravans that come through that allow you to sell some of those utilities or furniture and stuff like that to them and you can get money, you can get gold for it that you can buy other things. Armor, weapons, and decorations are other stockpiles that you can use. Now let's go ahead and start talking about the zoning. Uh, zoning is how you're able to progress in this game, and I do mine a little bit different. I'm going to give you the basics for it on this episode. Uh, we'll finish talking about that, and then we'll go into move into a little bit more strategy and in the next few episodes. So to lay your zones, zones are free to lay down, and you can lay them however big or small you want to, <clears throat> to a point. Uh, your basic zone that you're going to always start off with is carpentry, because you need carpentry zones so that you can make a carpenter's bench, so that you can make the wood detailer's bench, so that you can make the masonry bench, so that you can start making walls and everything else. <clears throat> you want to have them somewhat close to your stockpile or your main focus of work for that zone. Uh, we do right now have the carpentry bench, which you can see right up there. And for right now, we're just going to move this. We're going to put this right here, just right next to it. Three by three is the minimum size for each zone. You can go up however big you want. Like I said, you can make this whole thing a carpentry zone. Uh, but right now, we're just going to use it as a three by three, just to set the example, show what's going on. We go over here to our utilities, and a zone by itself isn't going to do anything. So we're going to make a carpenter's bench, which requires two wood, which we have right in there. And we're going to set that on the carpentry zone. 
Now, if you notice, if I try to set one out here, I get a red square. I can't put it out there. It has to be in the carpentry zone. I can't put it in the stockpile. It has to be in the carpentry zone. So it does really help out with that. I'm gonna go ahead and space bar so they can resume the game. And you'll see them preparing the zone. So whatever her name is. Aelith just made the carpenter's bench. Uh, now right clicking on it doesn't do anything. It just destroy carpenter's bench and then whatever else is on the zone. You can expand the, zo the zone or does delete the zone if you want to. Uh, but you, for most of the stuff that's in this game, you need the wood t detailer bench. To make the wood detailer, wood detailer bench, you need to have the carpenter's bench. So we're going to go ahead and make that. <clears throat> And the wood detailer uh, is two wood and one stone. Now, only one person can be at a bench or a, a utility at once. If you're working on bigger stuff or you're really wanting to try to get the most out of, you know, making walls or anything like that, you'll need multiple mason's benches or carpenter's benches. So that way you can have two or three people working at once. Alright, so now we have our uh, wood detailer, and from there on, the, car the bone carving bench is another one that you can use on the carpentry, but let's go ahead and set up, we're going to pause it, <clears throat> go ahead and set up our masonry, and the reason why I pause it, guys, is because you'll get, you'll get lost, or you'll get distracted by something, and your game will keep going, and people will die from hunger, and the world will end, and it's retarded. Oh, wrong one. I'm sitting here trying to put a mason's bench down. Let's put a masonry zone up. So down here at the bottom to zones, masonry, three by three, and we'll put the mason's bench right on Yeah. Now see, she'll go over there and she'll actually come back to the wood detailer because that's what's required. See, it says in the, in the brighter green, wood detailer is required to make this piece of utility, this utility, I guess. There you go. Now things like the anvil and, and the smelter and everything like that, those require the forge zone. I would assume that they'd be, they'd be right in, with the masonry, but they're not. So now with this right here, you can kind of see that we have a zone set up. I can make this to where if I go to manage stockpile and you see how they still have these stones over there, I can say, all right, enable stone too. And you'll see the people will start moving out to gather that stone and bring it over to the stockpile. It is nice to have it in a centralized location for the fact that if you have it close to these, uh, like your masonry zone and your carpentry zone, you're going to get good use out of it. It's going to be less time that they're going to have to be walking, um, especially because some of these things that require like three or four stone and two wood, they have to walk back and forth. They can only carry one piece of stone at a time, and only one person works on any given utility. It's not a group effort. It's one person. So that one person, if he's got to go get four stone and the stone are way over here, he's going to have to walk back and forth four times to make that thing. So keeping him close by is really, really a great tip. Uh, that's all I'm going to do for this episode, guys. Make sure you join me on the next episode. Um, I'm going to probably put these out once a day get these out so that we can you know everybody can have some time to absorb it instead of just going right in at the later episodes um next episode we're going to start talking a little bit more strategy also talking about planting which you will need this is a great start off right here but you need planting in there as well so i'm going to get that one recorded next and kind of talk to you through all that and uh until next time guys i'm dreamy 23 saying game happy make sure you guys like comment and subscribe and if you thought this was a good tutorial make sure you guys subscribe share with your friends definitely check out the game it's really awesome i'm in love with it and uh i'll see you later bye guys